We've got become like a feather on the breath of God, gain wisdom through the study of the unknown. The soul is not in the body, the body is in the soul. So that's telling me this is a very mm, spiritual. All right, so, you know, I can't help but when I look at this, there's definitely uh, somebody who is going through a Kundalini awakening watching this. Um, for other, you know, and, you know, I say that because, of course, the snake here and temperance, which, and of course, a, a lot of other things as well. The high priestess, Wheel of Fortune, the world all here. This, this world card touching the Wheel of Fortune and the high priestess just, you know, it's like, you've entered in the past you know i'm kind of seeing this as for those that resonate with the kundalini awakening um that awakening this could be an awakening of any sort though you know i do get the kundalini awakening just because of the snake more than anything but yeah, you know, I'm starting to realize, oh yeah, and because of Ujit here at the bottom, right? She is about the Kundalini awakening. Mm. But it doesn't have to be, right? This is, this can be any kind of spiritual awakening because there are all kinds of different kinds of awakenings. And I feel I'm getting the sense more and more that though a Kundalini awakening is extremely physical and it's a very specific type of physical transformation that, you know, there are all kinds of different awakenings that do involve, you know, um, physical work, right? This alchemy that that's i'm seeing happen you know because in this net hit in the uh under energy the below energy you know we see this green here which is alchemy right she is the and this this is part of it too right this is and of course this manifests physically as well uh or more emotionally, I guess I, sh I should say. When I say physically, I mean kind of in the emotional, right? In the physical world, you're feeling this. It's not just something that's happening inside of your body, which it is. And you do feel it, right? You know, this is stuff she's, she's, um, cut off her back. And this is, has a sense of self sacrifice about it. But this is also the part of alchemy, you know, the beginning, the first stage of alchemy is the breakdown of the old, right? And this is part of the Kundalini process as well, is the breakdown of the old energetic pathways and rebuilding new ones. But this is about subconscious fears, right? And we see this happening here. So there's this... Um, battle here right apep is um in the story of you know in egypt ra right this is kepper ra he's the first he's there are three stages of ra he's he's the first one he's the one that defeats apep during the dark night of the soul and rises in the morning right he is the morning sun so that is interesting, right? And the fact that we have the moon here, which is very balanced. You know, this is balance here. Yeah, and balance here. And this is stability, right? This is a nine. This is a five. This is a five. We have a 10 here. Yeah, we have the world in the past. So we are coming to the end of a cycle, but we're finding that stability, that balance within the change which i really like this is you're so <laughs> you know and i'm really seeing the culmination of 
what we've been going through, right? This evolution that's been happening. And I'm really seeing this maturity really, you know, show in some of these readings this time. It's really amazing. Um, so I guess right here is where I want to go next. You know, this Wheel of Fortune in the uh, air element. And it's interesting, you know, we see, you know, it's like, and I'm drawn to the moon here as well, because we see the different cycles of the moon. And the Wheel of Fortune can be about cycles, right? We see the sun shining here, and that there's a rainstorm over here. And, you know, also this kind of underworld, you know, this, this shadow work that we're doing, you know, this well here comes from the underworld, right? So there is this, oh, and it's even, you know, this could even be like flowing down the mountain, right? To this well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this work, you know, it's like, I feel like you're consciously aware that the work you're doing and you are, you know, consciously doing this work is bringing, you know, there are, there's a lot of abundance that's going to come from it, right? Just the cycles, like we have to face the darkness in order to, um, fa you know, face the darkness in order to bring about the day. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> but, you know, and we see like, you know, I feel like this is this, the sun being reflected here in this pool. And, uh, you know, we see these people, right? Reflections of the past, right? This, uh, um, once again, I feel like you're consciously looking at your past, right? The cycles and, and breaking them, right? Breaking free of karmic cycles. Paying attention to just the cycles in life, um, you know, whatever they may be, whether this is like, you know, the moon cycle itself or just, you know, signs that you get, right? Feelings that you get because we see a lot of water here. <clears throat> and, you know, the high priestess is here as well, you know, right below. And this is... <clears throat> You know, we see this rainbow here, which we don't often see with the High Priestess, and she's in this line of um, with temperance. And I love that we see um, this heart because I do feel like you know this heart. This is the heart chakra work, and I do think that you know this is showing up in the earth element. So this is something that you're feeling, you know, is happening very physically. You know, and this could be, you know, I have to say, it could be some kind of secret that whether it's come to light already or it is you sense it, right? Because you you are very in tune, right? So you could be sensing it. This could be your secret, right? This could be you not coming out about this newfound um, spirituality, right? You're keeping it to yourself. But with this rainbow here sitting next to temperance, there is this sense of, once again, the alchemy, and we see this, you know, um, fire in her belly, and then the water, right? That balance between the masculine and the feminine, and once again, that temperance energy. And having, you know, of course, with temperance, yes, there's that alchemy part of it, but also the patience. I feel like the patience with the cycle, you know, knowing that the cycle has to end and just, you know, learning how to play, how to, you know, keep your eye. It's like I was talking about in the intro, keeping your eye on that one goal and kind of balancing as things change. Just staying playful with that. 
become like a feather on the breath of God. And there is, you know, gain wisdom through the study of the unknown. That's perfect high priestess, you know, and I do think that, you know, that's part of this, this world you stepped into. You have started like some esoteric studies. <clears throat> But this, this secret being kind of in this line with this Dreamer 3, and it's entitled Soul Loss. But, you know, I don't like that uh, title because I don't think we can lose our soul. <laughs> I think I do like the visuals in this, though. <laughs> I do, because I think, you know, part of healing the heart when when our heart gets torn out, right, when we experience heartbreak, that feeling of emptiness is a part of the healing, right? We have to open up that space. If we, if we don't feel that, then it's not open, right? That emptiness is kind of proof that we have an open heart. And... It, I feel like these birds, I always see the crows as um, spirit guides, right? Helpers, of course, if you see it that way, right? If you're afraid of crows, if you've got bad association with crows, they're probably not there to help you. <laughs> but I do, you know, and I even see, look, he's even got a heart shape right here. They're eating the heartache, Right there, this is part of this alchemy that's happening. Eating the pain, processing the pain, digesting the pain in order to, and let, feeling that emptiness so that you can heal, so that love can come in and feel that space. And then we have the Maker Queen. And I love this Maker Queen. And she's got water just, you know, and this is kind of like that, um, there's the, you know, that healing of the hands. Also, um, you know, she's right across the way here from the high priestess. The pre high priestess has this rainbow moving between her hands. Once again, that healing energy. And also, you know, like, I, I touch these cards a lot in order to receive messages, right? Our hands are very much tools for uh, psychic energy. That's, what, I guess, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Mercury, guys. <laughs> and that's another thing. Mercury is retrograde in Scorpio, right? Um there are going to be a lot of memories surfacing for us to heal. So this could very well be a part of that. Um, but, you know, there's just this this joy that emanates from this Maker Queen. I love, you know, this this um, Afro hair with the, all the flowers in it. It's just, you know, um, I, whenever I see an Afro in any of these cards, even here, right? Even here, <clears throat> we're seeing it plenty of times. Uh, it's manifestation, right? The, the Maker Queen is abundant. She attracts abundance to her. <clears throat> and this is that that play, that playful energy. And, and that is what brings in things. So when, you know, and it, it naturally comes when we face our fears, when we face our emotions, when we feel them, when we process them, the natural cycle is that then we're able to feel joy, you know, and feel, finding the, the beauty in the pain as well, right? That is all a part of this, finding the beauty in all of our emotions, and the healing in all of those emotions. We've been taught to see them in specific ways and the grounding of course you know getting out in nature grounding um yeah always helps with the healing process but you know as i was talking about that this dancer 10 is in the future position 
And of course, this is about others as well, but I'm just seeing all the, the rainbow once again. And the rainbow of our emotions, and the appreciation of all of those emotions, right? We see a lot of water, <clears throat> and I'm just getting that, just a flood of emotion, but all, all, an appreciation of all of them. And yes, the joy, absolutely the joy, I do feel like, because the more that we can... You know, because that resistance is kind of what really causes us to lose our way uh, and get us stuck. Because when we feel sadness, we we have this tendency to close close the heart, right? Because we don't want to feel the sadness. Sadness is bad. And the more that we can accept all of those emotions, see the beauty in that emotion, appreciate what it's doing, Appreciate the tears, right? All of it. The more we can, the more quickly we move into the more abundant, joyful energy. And this is that shifting of mindset as well that's happening, right? The fives have been very much about shifts for me lately. All right. Let's get a piece of art for Virgo, then we'll get closing guidance, and then we'll take a quick look at all the underlying energies and see what they have to say. Do that. Did you all get this before? Huh. <laughs> I know this one has come up before a lot, and you know, the family. It is a big part of all of our, you know, what we've been talking about here, right? Um, these uh, memories are coming up that we're having to deal with. A lot of our insecurities um, have their root in the family. So um, there might be some, uh, some un, uh, unenjoyable... <laughs> Um, I get drawn to this picture down here, the stork with a, what looks like a fox or a beaver or something. It's like sticking its head down its, its throat. And, uh, you know, that's like the ibis, right? Egyptian. Uh, Thoth. Thoth is the ibis. Uh, Tahuti. However you want to. So, like, there are these, um... Yeah, I, I, and I don't know what this is, but it's some kind of battle too. And I'm just getting like, um, you know, a lot of the stuff you could even go back to uh, Greek mythology, you know, myths and just all that gets played out, right? It's all about family. But then I'm drawn to the rose here and the water, right? That by exploring this, <clears throat> there's that healing. Or this could be a tulip. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it does look more like a tulip, actually. At any rate, a flower. <clears throat> Which is innocence. Right? That open window. But letting in the light by shining a light on it, looking at it, there is healing. And then, of course, I always like to do this. And we see this, you know, I feel like right now what I'm seeing is that path forward right and there's going to be all these little things that show up in the way these little challenges that we just have to keep the focus forward 